This is the underside of the uh, V6 swap, the 2GR that USPS Pro did in uh, San Francisco. Um, it's kind of an overview of how, how it all looks. It's uh, everything's a real tight fit. Um, the clearance at the tip of the transmission to the frame, it's maybe an eighth of an inch there. Uh, up here at the Ford exhaust manifold of the downpipe to this little water line, that's about an eighth of an inch. Uh, there's a little more room at the front of the engine. Uh, I guess the first thing to look at is the uh, cross member. Um, when I got it, of course, it had this big uh, cutout for the transmission, and the uh, cross member was only that wide, and it had some cracks growing out of here. So I uh, built this box beam to stick on the back. Um, out of 90 thousandths thick steel. I trimmed it to follow the aft edge of the um, cross beam and then just got this box welded up. So the section of the cross member used to be that thick when it was blue, it was new, and it got cut down to that thick. So the original thickness width was that. and. I've got a little more than that now, so I think I've effectively restored the cross section of the cross member, and it hasn't cracked since I did that change. Um, the cutout for the catalytic converter at the back is even more severe. Um, the only thing left was about that much width. And I can't recall if it was, I think it was cracking here also, I forget. Had a little piece welded on here that wasn't enough to do anything. So, uh, anyway, the box beam, I extended it clear across from, from here all the way across the full width of the cross member. And uh, that's worked well for the last 120,000 miles. Um, the rear engine mount. Uh, this piece here is homemade. Uh, that, I think, is a stock uh, spider piece. Let's see what else we got. Um, the axle is uh, all one piece. There's no idler in it. This is off of a Matrix, Toyota Matrix. Um, the oil pan, I clearance. I, I was going to take, I'll take another picture with a 2 by 4 it's about, I think, two inches clearance with it set down. Um, I usually get hit right along in here and it bends it out, but it's uh, never, I've never leaked. This is the third oil pan I've been, I put on here in 120,000 miles. When they get too ugly, I just pop on a new one. But I haven't had any real problems with it scraping. It just accumulates stuff. Um, let's see. Air conditioning lines. It's got a, a AC compressor from an Avalon. Um, these lines here, um, Marco modified, got them cut and spliced to splice the, these fittings into the spider piece, and then got these rubber lines fabricated. So from here forward, it's um, stock spider, and this is the only pieces that were welded up. Uh, the radiator line, you can see from up there. Uh, comes off the water pump. That smooth hose there is off of a, or made for a Kia, I think. I rummaged through the auto parts store and found one that was the right shape. And then this little piece I made, that's an aluminum line, comes across the bottom, and goes up, and then back to the center, picks up the hard lines, um, coming through the center of the spider. Uh, that's that tight clearance to the manifold, but Never had any problems with anything moving. I think the engine mounts are really tight. Um, over here, the forward engine mount is a uh, 
homemade piece bolted to the transmission and then the, the piece that's bolted to the uh, bulkhead there is a stock spider part. The um, slave cylinder here is a stock spider, spider part. Uh, the little heater hose up buried up in there. That one is off of a design for a Saturn. Another piece I rummaged and found one that was the, the right shape to connect the V6 to the center line goes up to the to the spider of course. And then my homemade air, air filter box. Yeah, while we're in here, that's the uh, forward exhaust manifold. Um, it's been modified. It was uh, cut. Hard to get my hand in there. Uh, that's, that's no point. It was cut up just below the collector, uh, just above the cat, to um, fine tune this flange to get it to um, line up where it needs to go. Um, it's actually, there's just enough room to take that manifold out without dropping the engine with no holes in the firewall, which is, I've done a couple times, uh, develop cracks until I put that flex joint in here just a couple weeks ago. I'm hoping that will keep it together. Um, there's the AC compressor with some clearance. Uh, that can actually be removed without dropping the engine, which I've done once. And uh, also the alternator is in there. And it, it can also be removed from above without dropping the engine. Uh, the right engine mount, that piece right there is uh, one of Galki's fine pieces. And there's one up on the top, I think I mentioned in the other video. That's the other half of his piece that he designed and built. Oh, the, um, the bell, bell housing has had two pieces welded on it. Uh, one lug here and one lug over here. Um, I'm sure it was nasty to weld to the the bell housing it's full of oil. You have to, it's tough to clean and get to weld aluminum. I've never tried that. Um, but that's the only mod that I know of to the bell housing. So I think that was pretty straightforward. Uh, there's another tight clearance right there. It's fun. Between the uh, drive shaft and the transmission. But my argument for all this stuff that looks a little sketchy is it's worked fine for 120,000 miles. So can't complain too much. Um, USPS Pro made the piece together the whole exhaust system. Um, it's got a, three cats on it, one on each manifold and then another one right here. And it's got a V-band clamp up there. And uh, I guess there's a shot of the rear bank. I've only had to change the coils. I think I had two coils go bad. I think they were both junkyard parts, one on the rear bank and one on the front bank. And I finally cut a uh, access hole on the horizontal shelf in the firewall, just fairly small, at maybe eight inches by 12 inches to uh, get at the spark plugs on the front bank and change that coil pack on the front bank. Anyway, that's about it.